Ripple and CC Ripple Pulse can both be found under the Distort category. We'll start with Ripple, and I'm actually gonna apply this to an adjustment layer. So I'll go up to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and apply it to that instead. I've set up a grid already. Because this is a distortion effect, it is gonna be a lot easier to see with that grid in the background. So by default, nothing is happening when you apply this effect. But as soon as you increase the radius property right here, we're gonna see ripples going all through our composition. Now this radius value is a percentage of whatever layer you apply it to. So if I want it to affect the entire comp, since this is an adjustment layer, I need to crank this all the way up to 100%. And if I press the space bar to play back, we immediately see the ripples going through the entire composition. Let's take a look at the rest of the controls. We have the center of the ripple, which is by default right in the center of the layer, but you can offset this to be wherever you want. So if I wanted it to be coming from the left side, that's where the ripples are going to come from. And it's a little confusing to look at right now because it almost appears like these ripples are moving towards the center point, but that's just because of the size of the width and height. So let's skip over these two right here and just go straight to the width and height for a second. The wave width is the distance between crests, basically, in the waves. So it's really small right now, it's only set to 20. If I increase this up much higher, then we're gonna get much wider waves. If you're just looking at the horizontal lines, you can see that pretty clearly. This is a lot like the wave warp effect and the width property for that effect. But where Ripple is different than wave warp is that it's distributing this distortion in a radial way around the center point rather than in a linear way horizontally and vertically. So let's reset the center of the ripple back to the center of my layer. And now that my wave width is much higher, I'll play this back and we can kind of follow these ripples across the comp now. It's a lot easier to see. Now the wave height is basically the amplitude of the wave. If I just increase and decrease that, you can kind of see that the distortion is more or less. It's almost like the ripples are taller or shorter. They're more or less intense. So the wave width is kind of like the scale of the ripple and the wave height is the intensity of each ripple. Now you'll notice this maxed out at a wave width of 100, which is a little unfortunate. You can't get ripples that are any bigger than just this. And remember I said the radius is a percentage, so if I didn't want this to be adjusting the outer edges of my comp, I could just back it off a little bit until we don't see that distortion. And since this is perfectly circular, I do have to pay attention to just the top and bottom edges, since going beyond that is going to start introducing that black distortion, the transparent pixels at the edges of the comp. So I really have to bring that down so that the circle is small enough to not go higher than the top and bottom of the comp. Okay, let's jump back up to here to the type of conversion. And actually, I'm gonna turn the radius back up to 100% for now. The type of conversion by default is set to asymmetric. This is a much more realistic looking ripple and much more authentic to the way that it would look if you drop something in a pond or a pool of water. If I change this from asymmetric to symmetric, then we're gonna get something that looks much more symmetric. So it really looks like the center point of our layer is what's moving up and down and causing these ripples to move out throughout the entire comp. And that might be something you're after since it has a lot less distortion than the asymmetric ripples. I'll put that back to symmetric, and the next option is the wave speed. Now, just like wave warp, this is a value in seconds. So with a wave speed of one, it means that every one second, it's going to loop. So this frame looks exactly the same as the first frame of the comp, because it's one second down the line. And if I go to two seconds, same frame, all the way. So you can think of this as kind of a loop point. Now, where it might be a little bit confusing is if you increase the wave speed to two, it doesn't mean that every two seconds there's a loop. It means there's two loops for every one second. So the best way to think about that wave speed is how many loops per second. So if you wanted a two second loop, then you need to put this down to 0.5. So if this is our starting frame, I'll take a snapshot. We go to one second, you see that it is not identical. And then we go to two seconds and I show that snapshot it's exactly the same as the first frame. So there's half of a loop every second or one full loop every two seconds. And if I turn that all the way down to zero so that this is not animated at all, then we can go down to the ripple phase and just increase this value to completely customize how the ripples are moving. So if you wanted this to start off at a certain speed, I could say, put this down to zero, set a keyframe, go forward a second and set this to one cycle. So this is the same as a wave speed of one at this point because those keyframes are one second apart. Then it's gonna animate for a second and then stop. But then let's say I go forward two more seconds and then just increase this to a value of say 180. 
and I'll look at my value graph so we can see what that looks like. We're moving at a constant rate from zero to one revolution, and then a constant rate from one revolution to 180 degrees past that. But if I just grab these two keyframes and easy ease them, then I'll hold down Alt or Option on a Mac to just modify this handle so that this is roughly still a constant rate, bring this handle in a little bit, and then maybe ease this one out quite a bit while holding Shift to snap it horizontal. And now I'll play this back and it starts at a certain speed and then eases into a final resting point where it's completely static. Now that was pretty noticeable on the slowdown, so I'll probably want to increase this value a little bit until we get a nice smooth curve between these two points. But you get the idea. The ripple phase gives you a lot more control over the speed of that wave. And you can even combine that with the wave speed. If I turn that wave speed up to say two, then it's gonna combine my ripple phase keyframes with a constant wave speed of two. So there's a lot of possibilities with combining those two properties. But that's really all there is to the ripple effect. Now I'm gonna shut that off and we're gonna to go to the next effect, which is CC Ripple Pulse. If I bring that out onto my adjustment layer, again, nothing happens by default. And nothing will happen until you actually add keyframes. So let's just go straight to the pulse level, which in parentheses it says animate. This is the property that we actually have to add keyframes to in order to see something. So I'm just gonna add a keyframe at the default value of 100 on our first frame, and then I'll go forward maybe 12 frames. I'm working at 24 frames per second and increase that up to say 300, and then go forward another 12 frames and we'll go back down to 100. All right, so we have these three keyframes here, and if I play this back, we get a very subtle distortion. It's really hard to see. So why don't we go down to the amplitude right here, which is defaulted to 100, and just increase it quite a bit. And now we can see that ripple just pushing through the entire comp. Now it's obviously not very smooth at all, and that's because this is really based on the speed and the easing between keyframes. So watch what happens if I pause, say right here, where we can really see that distortion, and I just easy ease them with the F9 key. Suddenly everything got a lot more smooth. If I play this back, now we've got a much more smooth ripple pulsing through the entire composition. Now, just like before, we have a center control, so I could push this to say the top left corner, and then the ripple will come from that point. I will just undo that so it's back in the center of the composition. We have time span, which is basically the speed of that ripple. So if I turn that time span up, it's going to take longer to pulse through the entire composition. And if we turn that down, it's going to go faster. But as you can see, that's also affecting the amplitude. So the higher that time span is, the bigger your ripples are going to be. So to balance that out, you have to play with both the time span and the amplitude. Now this last property is actually really useful for visualizing what's happening. It's a render bump map RGBA. If I check that on, everything goes white, which isn't all that useful. Uh, let me go back to the first keyframe and I'm just gonna decrease the pulse level value a bit. And you'll notice that as I get to zero, we go from white to mid gray and then down to black. So I'm gonna put this value at the start right at zero. And if I just use my text color picker right here, we can take a look at that value and see that it is a brightness value of 50%. In other words, it's a 50% gray value. And a bump map is a grayscale image that can be used to drive distortion. So depending on how bright or dark a pixel is in the bump map, a corresponding pixel on what is being distorted will be warped in a certain direction. So in the case of this effect, basically up or down, if we're looking down at a pond of water and a ripple is coming from the center point. And with a pulse level of zero, we have a 50% gray, which to the effect is applying a distortion of zero, basically unaffected. Without the bump map on, we see that there is no distortion with or without this effect on. All right, so let me check that back on and then move forward a little bit and we'll notice that as our value increases from zero to 300, we have a very small gradient from that 50% gray to 100% white. And that's what's driving the distortion. If I turn this back off, you can see that white pixels are basically being pushed downwards or into the composition. And then if I turn that bump map back on and go forward again, I'm gonna change that third keyframe from 100 down to negative 100. And we have a black circle showing up now. If I move forward again, there's a much tighter gradient between the white and black because the time between these two values is the same as the time between these two values. So naturally that gradient is crushed a little bit. So if I move that forward a bit, we can see a softer transition between those two values. 
Now let's turn off the bump map and take a look. You can see that where that black circle was, those pixels are being pulled toward us. So a white value pushes in and a black value pulls out. And if we play this back, you can see that now we have a very nice fluid looking ripple pulse. Now I'm gonna back up to that second keyframe and turn that bump map back on and just turn the pulse level down until that white dot is basically right in the center of my composition. So we basically don't have a clipped out bright spot on this value. And I'm just gonna very carefully dial this back. So just going up to a value of 20 from zero gets us to that 100% white point in the center of our bump map. And if I go to the third keyframe and bring this one down as well to something around negative 20, then we're also getting to that pure black value. Now in most distortions using bump maps, values above or below 100% white or 100% black are basically going to be ignored. But as you can see, that really dulled down my ripple for this effect. So even though that bump map is being rendered out as pure white and black, you can increase the pulse level value to increase or decrease the distortion. So rendering that bump map as a visual reference isn't all that great, but you could use this bump map to drive something else. Now, what I'm gonna do really quickly is just turn off the adjustment layer switch. So this is just a regular solid layer again. And remember this said the bump map is RGBA, meaning red, green, blue, and alpha. So I now have semi-transparent pixels. I don't want those, so I'm going to add a solid composite effect after the ripple pulse and change the color to 50% gray. Remember, that's the neutral value where no distortion will take place when reading this as a bump map. So I'll collapse that up and I can actually turn it off. And then I'll make another adjustment layer, layer new adjustment layer, and I'm gonna bring up the glass effect, CC glass, and apply it to the adjustment layer. This effect uses a bump map. So for that source, I'm gonna choose adjustment layer one where CC ripple pulse is. And I'm gonna make sure that this is switched to effects and masks so that it's looking at the affected layer and not the unaffected layer. With that applied, I'm going to get a similar ripple but with lighting effects because of the added controls that we have in CC glass. If I turn my height up, we're gonna see this a lot more dramatically. So let me just increase that size a bit, maybe make this a little bit softer, and then we'll take a look at this played back. So there you go, something that looks a lot more complex than just pushing those pixels around. Like I said, we have more controls over how that distortion looks using CC glass or any effect that uses bump maps. So that is the ripple effect and CC ripple pulse and how you might use them to do something a little bit more complex than the default settings. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.